Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I am going to show you how to read a color work chart and how to knit color work. This is the beginning of my blizzard sweater. I, maybe I might change the name from blizzard to something else, but you can see that I've done the ribbing and the short rows in the back neck, and now I'm ready to start the color work. So I'm going to use this opportunity to show you exactly how that is done. This pattern has been designed specifically for somebody who's new to color work so that you can easily make a fantastic color work sweater without too much trouble. So let's start with the chart. I folded it in half so that it fits nicer in my bag. Also, I don't really wanna show off the whole chart for this design. Um, so how you read a chart is you read it from the bottom to the top. This is the bottom of the page, from the bottom to the top, and then you read each row from the right to the left. So you basically read it opposite of how you read English writing. This is also how you knit. If you think about it, I'm knitting from the right to the left. So I'm reading my chart from the right to the left. So I'm reading the chart in the same direction I'm knitting. And as I'm knitting, I'm moving up or away from me. And that's also how I'm reading the chart here. You can see in this yoke chart, it starts with six stitches here, and then it expands and you have certain rows of increases until you end up with 12 stitches per repeat here. I'm gonna show you how to manage those rows further on in the tutorial, but for right now, we're gonna start with the very first row. You can see row one. I'm gonna put my pen there to kind of make it a little bit easier to read. This is how I generally um, read my color work charts is I'll mark them off as I go and then I'll just lay my pen there so I can easily see um, the patterning on that specific row. You can get a fancy tool for this but I've always got a pen and it works just fine or sometimes I'll just set my phone or another piece of paper or anything really just to make it a little bit easier to see the patterning on that row. So I'm on row one and it goes brown, white, brown, white, brown, white. It's a very simple two stitch repeat, even though it's worked over a six stitch repeat that this starts on. And this is so that it's a really easy start into color work for you guys. So I have my main color, my main color is the brown. And normally I knit continental. So I pick the yarn and I hold it in my left hand. But when I knit color work, I'm gonna hold the main color in my right hand and I'm gonna throw the main color and I'm gonna hold the contrast color in my left hand and I'm going to pick the contrast color yarn. Sorry about that fly. Um, the reason I'm doing this is to maintain color dominance. Basically, when you're knitting, one color is gonna sit a little bit on top of the other color and the color that sits a little bit on top is considered the dominant color. If you end up holding your contrast color in the non-dominant position, you'll have a slightly more muted motif, but as long as you maintain the same color dominance or you hold the same color in the same hand throughout the whole project, it will look fine. So whatever hand you're holding the color in, that's the hand you have to keep holding the color in for the whole project. So I'm gonna hold the white in my left hand for the whole project and the brown in my right hand for the whole project. That way I will maintain the same color dominance throughout. So I'm holding the main color in my right hand. When you start your contrast color, you wanna leave a little tail about six inches long for weaving in later. I'll just hold it with my right hand to snug it into place. You can see I've already knit the first stitch. This is the beginning of the round marker. I've already knit the first stitch. I just knit one stitch past the beginning of the round marker to make sure the round, beginning of the round marker doesn't fall off. So that's my first brown stitch. Then I do a white stitch, brown, white, brown, white. That's the pattern I'm working in here. So I'm knitting brown, white, brown, white all throughout. And I just throw the main color, the brown, and I pick the white, the main color, or the contrast color. Now, as you're working through this, these are gonna be very short floats because it's just every other stitch, but you can see in the back here, on the back side of the knitting, you can see the white floats much easier than you can see the brown ones, but that's your float. Um, it's 
the strand of yarn that has to pass over the opposite color stitch. So this white float has to travel across this brown stitch. You wanna make sure that your floats are not too tight or too loose. You want to um, go every little while and kind of spread your stitches out like this to make sure that you're having um, really good tension in your color work fabric. If you hold them too tight, your fabric will be puckered. If you hold them too loose, it will just be really big and loose. You wanna try to maintain um, an even tension. Make sure that your floats are the right length that your fabric will be even, which is something that takes a lot of practice. You will not have even tension on your first color work project, and that is fine. Don't worry about it, just block it, because blocking solves many, many ills. Wet block it, and then on your next project, you will do better. So here I am, knitting my pattern all the way around this round. So this is a six stitches for each repeat, and I just repeat this six stitch repeat until I come around back around to the beginning of the round. So I'm gonna continue to knit this um, sweater, and then I'm going to come back when I reach this increase row, and I'm gonna show you how to handle an increase row. Here I am back again, and I'm ready to work this first increase round. It's row number three. And you can see it's worked in main color, only in main color, only the brown. And you work three stitches, then you increase, then work three stitches, and then increase. This is so it's really easy to memorize. You just knit three, make one left, knit three, make one left, all around. So you can, I'm gonna pull this a little bit closer to the screen so you can see it a little bit easier. But you can see how the first two rows of the chart don't have these outside columns over here. That's because there's no stitch there. Sometimes when you're looking at a chart, it'll be a gray box or maybe an X. And up here in the key, the key is what tells you the colors, what stitch you're working. I suppose I should have covered that in the beginning. But here's your key. So it tells you what kind of increase to do. The dark squares are your main color, which is brown. The white squares are your contrast color, which is white. Jimmy, I'm filming. Jimmy is sitting right here, right there. He's eating peanut butter. Anyway, so here is my chart. You can see the first two rows don't have these outside columns, but then after we increase two stitches, in this repeat, we get those new columns show up for those new stitches. So we're going from a six stitch repeat to an eight stitch repeat. If you have trouble keeping track of where the repeats are, you can always put stitch markers every six stitches when you first start. Jimmy, you need to be quiet. Every six stitches when you first start your sweater project, or however many stitches is in the repeat of the project that you're working on. That way you can easily see where all the repeats are. But here we're just doing knit three, make one left, knit three, make one left. I've done most of the round already, but I'm gonna show you on the end. So since I'm only working in the main color, I'm gonna hold it in my left hand because I am a normally, normally knit continentally. You can see my very first round is done here. So I've made an increase here. So I just knit three. Jimmy, you need to stop talking. I knit three, then I go to make one left. To make one left, you identify the bar that's between the stitches. Oh, if I do it over the paper, you can see really well. You identify that bar that's between the stitches. You use your left hand needle to pick up that bar, bringing your needle from front to back. You can see I've now got that on my needle, and then you knit into the back of it. There's my new stitch. Then I knit three more. Here's another make one left. I identify the bar between the stitches, pick it up, bringing my needle from front to back, knit into the back of it. Knit three more. Then I'm here to make another increase. I identify the bar between the stitches, pick it up with my left hand needle, going from front to back, and knit into the back of it. Knit three more. Now I'm to the beginning of the round marker again, but I need to work this very last increase here. There's 
There we go. Now I'm to the beginning of the round. You can see this stitch is really loose. That's because while I'm knitting these main color, these two main color rounds, I just drop my white. I just drop my main color and it just sits there. It's still attached. You can see it's still attached. I don't cut the yarn since it's only two rows between. I just leave it there. And then when I come back to knit color work again, I'll pull that stitch snug again so that it's the right tension. You can see here, this one is loose because it's my very first stitch and I can just pull on my yarn tail to snug that one up if I want to. I generally don't worry about it till the end. But I pick up my white, my contrast color in my left hand again, move my main color over to my right hand and I'm ready to begin on my next round, which is round four, which is again, just every other stitch a different color. This one right here, that's what I'm gonna be working now. Start with brown and I'm off. Knitting the color work. These first rounds in this pattern, in Blizzard and also in Skift, which is the children's version of this pattern, I make sure that you ease into knitting with color work by having the first, well, through to here, just be every other stitch a different color. That way you can very easily work on holding the yarn in your different hands and picking and throwing and managing the tension of your stitches and how tight you hold these floats when there's only one stitch floats to manage. And then when you get further on in, the floats get a little bit longer. Like here's three stitches, but there aren't any any longer than three stitches. And when I get further down the yoke and I get to this point where the floats are a little bit longer, I will come back and I will show you again how I manage those. Oops, messed up. Just an FYI, if you mess up color work and you knit it the wrong color, and you don't want to go back and rip it out, you can just put a stitch marker, like a removable stitch marker on that stitch. And when you are all done, you can come back and just work one duplicate stitch over that wrong colored stitch. And nobody will ever know. So I'm gonna go and knit. I'll probably be back tomorrow. I'm gonna go and knit until I'm up here where this, the floats are longer so that I can show you how to manage a longer float. Here I am back again to show you some more of how to knit color work. So this is Blizzard so far. You can see I'm quite a ways into the yoke now. And we're working on a row where you do three whites followed by three browns and three whites, three browns. This is the longest float you will encounter in this uh, pattern, only a three stitch float. You can see on the back side here. That's as long as it is from there to there. That's your longest floats. Keeping them short makes them a lot easier to manage. Manage the tension of them. I've dropped a stitch. Here we go. Okay, so here I am. I've still got my main color in my right hand to maintain my color dominance, my contrast colors in my left hand. I'm gonna knit three stitches of brown. Now here I've done my three stitches and I'm gonna do my first stitch of white. Then after I do that first stitch, I'm gonna spread the stitches out on my right hand needle. That makes sure that this float, this white float that I've just started is long enough. Cause if I had it too short, let me do this over. If I had them all, all these stitches bunched up tight and I did that stitch and I just kept going, you can see how it's bunched up right there. That's gonna give you a really bumpy fabric. That's not gonna look right. You can see how it's all bunched up, whereas these ones are nicely spread out. Kids have started fighting, which is perfect timing for this. They're playing downstairs, so hopefully they sort themselves out. So I'm gonna spread out the stitches on my right hand needle, and then I'm gonna do my first white stitch and I'm gonna spread them out some more just to make sure that these stitches here are not pulled tight and bunched up. And then I'm gonna keep knitting till I've got my three stitches. Then I'm gonna sti switch to brown and do that exact same thing, spreading the stitches out on my right hand needle. 
It takes a bit of remembering to do it when you get started, but now that I've got as much experience as I have, it's just an instinctive motion to just spread those stitches out. Just part of the rhythm of knitting color work for me. So that's how you keep your stitches from getting all bunched up. And if you're really worried about if it's too tight, you can come back to the stuff that's already done and you can just spread it all out and see if it stretches nicely for you. See, it's nice and flexible. There's no points at which it's bound up and tight and it lies nice and flat, which you can't really tell since it's flat on the table. Maybe you can tell now, but don't worry about it if your color work is bunchy, if it's your first project. It's gonna take some practice to get your tension down. Just wet block it and that should solve most of your problems. I keep losing stitches. There you go. So there's Blizzard. So you can see I've started out really easy. These motifs here are really easy. It's just every other stitch. And then you move into this one, which is a little more complicated, but still not super hard. The longest felts you have are three stitches and it's all easily memorized. Like two brown, one white, two brown, one white, two brown, one white. You only have to remember a few stitches at a time. And you come down into this one. This one's no more complicated than this one. Really nothing's more complicated than, than this row here. Three brown, three white, three brown, three white. This is the most complicated row you will find in this sweater. I'm losing stitches again. So I've still got another 13 rows to go before I'm done with this yoke, but this is where we're at. And I think this is where I'm gonna end this tutorial. So if you are watching this video um, before February of 2022, this pattern probably isn't out yet. But if you're watching it after that date, it should be out. And I'll put links to it in the description box below um, so you can go and get it. If you want the children's version of this design, which is also very easy and designed for beginners, then that's all already available in uh, on Ravelry and my website. And that one is called Skift and I'll put a link to it down below. So here it is. There you go. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you later.